The Earth is our home and more often than not it comes with absurdities and outright chilling activities. Lake Natron is one of those absurdities. This unique wonder stretching itself inland somewhere in North Tanzania is made up entirely of something quite deadly. Imagine a lake with its major characteristics perfectly suiting the dead rather than the living for the majority of humanity. Everyone is familiar with the mythological monster Medusa, whose menacing glance turned men to stone. That is a myth, but a modern natural wonder in Africa does exactly that. A special lake in North Tanzania turns creatures to stone. Join us in our video today, as we bring to you the chilling account of Africa's deadliest lake, which turns animals into stones. Be sure to leave a comment, give the video a like, and subscribe to the channel for more thrilling and pulsating future videos. Located in the intense eastern rift of the East African Plateau, Lake Natron is a hypersaline lake with a high alkaline content. There are at least four alkaline lakes in Tanzania, although Lake Natron is most well known. This lake is only 3 meters deep and 22 kilometers broad. The southern Waso Ngiro River in Kenya supplies water into the lake, an unusual variety of lava with a high concentration of sodium and potassium carbonates flowed into the lake during the Pleistocene era from the Al Doinyo Lengai volcano slopes. The lake lasted thousands of years of tremendous evaporation from the heat because it had no outflow and only seldom got rain. The trona, an evaporate mineral consisting of sodium sesquicarbonate dehydrate and natron, made up of hydrated sodium carbonate in the residual water, were concentrated as a result, yielding a brine that was extremely poisonous. Interestingly, in the mummification process, the ancient Egyptians utilized sodium carbonate and bicarbonate. Lake Natron would have reduced the effort required of pharaonic embalmers. Its water is between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius, has an average alkalinity of 10.5 and a pH above 12. The lake's salinity has attracted cyanobacteria, salt-loving, halophilic microorganisms that depend on photosynthesis to exist. Cyanobacteria typically possess a variety of colors. Their pigment turns the water at Lake Natron into an eye-catching shade of crimson. Somehow, the lake supports a few different fish, invertebrate, and algae species. Some alkaline tilapia and a cichlid family member may survive in the lake's cooler regions. Lake Natron can be a death trap for some creatures, particularly birds. They are duped into plunging into the crimson waters in search of food by the mirror-like surface. They calcify both inside and out as they sink in the poisonous concoction. Wildlife photographer Nick Brandt garnered media attention in 2013 by arranging photographs of the mummified carcasses of the unfortunate animals around Lake Natron with his incredible photos. The positions were so gruesome that it appeared as though Medusa's finger had actually touched them. Over the devastated land, Brandt found the bones of birds and other animals, their carcasses sharply outlined in a layer of sodium carbonate chalk. In his book, Brandt stated, he unexpectedly found the creatures, all kinds of birds and bats, washed up along the shoreline of Lake Netron. Although the actual cause of death is unknown, the water is so salted and so filled that it would quickly remove the ink from his Kodak film boxes. One type of bird, however, has successfully established itself as a resident of Lake Netron. This is the critically endangered lesser flamingos breed, with an estimated 2.5 million. The only predators the flamingos face are the algae and cyanobacteria they consume. They can withstand the searing waters because they have glands in their heads that filter out the salt. They typically stay in the cooler sections, but if necessary, they can wade into the hot soup. Their skin is hard enough to shield them from burns. The flamingos are morally well protected from predators because of the harsh surroundings. Lake Natron, however, poses a threat to them as well. Due to the possibility of its pH level rising again in the event of light precipitation and concurrent lake water evaporation, the animals must also take precautions against the water's frequently unpredictable rise in temperature. 
Nonetheless, Lake Natron is essential to the survival of the birds. Lesser flamingos that are living now were born on Lake Natron, making it the largest breeding ground for the species in all of East Africa. As a result, the lake has been recognized as a global bird refuge. In 2007, a crew of wildlife videographers were in a helicopter that crashed into the lake as they tried to capture footage of the flamingos. It fell into the water nose first. All of the survivors of the collision were in the water unprotected. They were scorched on the skin and in the eyes, yet they were able to drag themselves ashore. Some locals came to their aid and helped them or else. They would have perished if they had remained in the water for any longer. Apparently, the lake's qualities is more favorable and suited to the dead than the living. When questioned about the occurrence of Lake Natron, Lothar Kreinitz, a former employee of the Leibniz Institute for Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries, responded, The soil on which Lake Natron was formed consists of exceptionally soda-rich salty volcanic ash origin. These high pH values are the result of the salt building up and concentrating in the water. Overall, the lake is only a few centimeters to meters deep, which speeds up the buildup of alkaline salts. After becoming dry, a substance known as trona, which is a combination of baking soda and soda, mainly sodium bicarbonate, crystallizes and coats the dry portions with an unfriendly gray-white crust. These regions give lake species an opportunity to temporarily flee the hostile surroundings or take advantage of the nearby food supplies. Additionally, the water's extraordinarily high concentration of sodium carbonate and other salts has an odd, you would even say unsettling, effect. Animals that perish in Lake Natron's waters are essentially preserved. Bats and birds are especially impacted. Krynitz, who has been to Lake Natron numerous times, affirms that the salty lies in the lake mummify the animals. The meat is preserved and dehydrated by the salt. The deceased body is preserved and dried out as a result. The method itself has been practiced for countless years. The ancient Egyptians mummified their corpses using sodium carbonate. The dead were so carefully preserved for future generations. The proposed construction of a soda ash facility on the shoreline of Lake Natron poses a new hazard to the lake. To extract sodium carbonate and turn it into washing powder for export, the facility would pump water from the lake. A coal-fired power plant and accommodation for more than 1,000 workers would be built alongside the facility to power the entire complex. In order to improve extraction efficiency, it is also possible that the engineers would use a hybrid brine shrimp. Chris Macon, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds International Officer for Africa, claims that there is almost no hope that the lesser flamingos will be able to reproduce in the midst of such chaos. Lesser flamingos in East Africa will be in danger of going extinct due to this change. 75% of the lesser flamingos in the world are born on Lake Natron. The construction of the soda ash factory by Tata Chemicals Limited of Mumbai and National Development Corporation of Tanzania is now being fought against by a collection of more than 50 East African environmental and conservation organizations. Ken Mwafe, the conservation program manager of BirdLife International's Africa Secretariat, is in charge of leading the organization that goes by the name Lake Natron Consultative Group. A communication from June 2008 prohibited Tata Chemicals from moving further with the Natron project, but explained that any future re-examination of this project will be governed by the Ramsar Wetlands Plan, which was in development. Due to its distinctive biodiversity, Tanzania added the Lake Natron Basin to the Ramsar list of wetlands of international importance on July 4, 2001. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks at the terrifying new ocean forming in Africa. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos.